Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the Panoptis Soundworks channel. Today we're going to take a look at CV sequencing with the Electron Analog 4. Now, in order to set up our control voltage outputs, we need to select the control voltage track here in the bottom right. And once that is selected, our bottom row of menu titles become relevant. So we are currently looking at CVA, which is defaulting to a gate. Now, a gate is an on or off state, which uh, depends on whether or not the key is being pressed down or not. Let's go ahead and set up CVB, which defaults to ground or uh, AKA doing nothing. So let's hold function and click CVB. Now that this menu is active, we could use the left and right arrows to scroll through our options. First up, we have pitch volt per octave, which is what we're gonna use in this instance uh, because we have a Eurorack modular system here and that is the correct standard for pitch control on a Eurorack. Uh, with this CV output setup, I would like to create an arpeggiating sound that morphs over time, but also has fast modulations per note hit. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that and how it's accomplished shortly. So let's go ahead and back out. Notice when we back out, our menu becomes populated. You have a coarse tune to transpose your sequence. You have a fine tune which will let you detune your, uh, your notes. You have pitch bend, which will allow you to bend up or bend down to a given note. And you have the slide parameter, which, is, which acts as a portamento knob, more or less, controlling the amount of time it takes for the slide to occur. Uh, slide also affects your note slides that you program in, so that's a dandy thing to keep in mind. Uh, now in the top right you have the track option and this is neat because you get to choose um, which track your CV out is looking for commands from. It defaults to CV but you could also sequence from the FX track or you could have your control voltage mimic your uh, first four tracks on your analog four. So let's leave that at CV for now. Let's go ahead and set up CVC function CVC and let's go ahead and keep scrolling here. We have pitch hertz per volt, which is a standard for certain synthesizer systems. We have value linear, which allows you to set a minimum and maximum voltage and you get 128 increments which allow you to increment through your limits in a linear fashion. Next we have a trigger which is sort of like a gate however its off state is linked to the beginning of the on state you basically get a pulse with a certain amount of milliseconds in the on state depending on what you set length to. Next, we have gate, which I already explained. And last but not least, we have clock, which sends out a pulse when the sequencer is running. Uh, you get to choose however, uh, you, it sen you get to choose uh, if it sends a pulse out every four steps, you could set it to send a pulse out every 16 steps, or you can set it to send a pulse out every single step of your sequence. So that's a, a nifty little thing you could use. So I'm gonna select clock here and back out. And here you see we have our parameter to change how many steps of the sequence go by before our, clo our clock triggers. Great, let's set up control voltage D, function CVD, and let's set this one to be a trigger. So why would one want to use a gate and a trigger for the same track, you might ask? Well, 
uh, when dealing with arpeggiation, for example, we if we hold down our uh, here, let me go ahead and dial in the arpeggiator so you could select ARP here and you could go ahead and select through and we should be able to hear ourselves here in a moment. There we are. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, so when we have a sustained arpeggiation, our gate will keep a constant on state, which will allow us to apply slower moving modulation to your sound. So the way I have things set up right now, I have CV, A, and B, which is coming out of over here. You need, you need the appropriate breakout cables. Let me zoom back real quick. Over here we have CV A and B and CV C and D with the appropriate breakout cables. It's a stereo to two mono. Uh, and that is going over here. Uh, A and B is going to uh, this side of my modular. And we have C and D coming in over here. So we have one volt per octave running uh, with these green cables to my two oscillators. And we have the gate going to my dual ADSR mo uh, module over here. And I'm using the gate as a long rising modulation. You could see I have my attack setting set pretty high over here. And that's going to give me that nice slow rise on my ar arpeggiation. You'll notice it's fading in as the cutoff of the filter is opening up. Now, CVC, which is the clock, is going to here. And that is running to my make noise echo phone, which is a delay module. And I'm basically synchronizing the delay with my sequence. And last but not least, once again, we have the gate and that, or the trig, I should say, and the trig is running to my make noise maths, which is uh, creating a, an envelope, which I'm sending to pulse width modulation control and um, shape, wave shape on my Z3000. And that's how we're getting uh, modulation per note, as well as slow modu modulation over the span of multiple notes. Let's hear that once again. Great. Uh, one last thing I would like to point out here. Uh, I, I overlooked this myself for a while. On your CV track, you also have an envelope and an LFO option that you can route to CV A through D, and you can manipulate its parameters from within the analog four. This is nifty. Uh, you could go ahead and you know send your LFO over to coarse or fine pitch control on your one volt per octave, and you could get some vibrato effects. Now, one last thing I want to mention here. Last, last thing for real this time. Uh, I have my modular running into in left and in right on my analog four. And this way I'm saving room on my mixer and it allows me to sum everything together and let's say I wanna apply effect to both my modular and my analog four. This is a way you could sum it. Now, to make sure you're getting signal, you need to select the FX track and go to external N. And here you have uh, volume control and pan control for in left and in right. Great. So lastly, I, I set up a little sequence here to uh, usher out the episode. I hope you found this information useful. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and like, and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section below. Cheers.